Hey hey, welcome to Half the Battle. As promised, this week we're taking a look at the cartoon episode Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent. An episode that doesn't actually feature Bazooka all that much. Go figure. The episode starts off with... Bazooka fishing, strangely enough. Huh. So, I guess that's where Fisherman Bazooka came from. Our hero and some of his friends, including Alpine of course, are camping on a beach for the night, when suddenly Bazooka spots a Cobra Trouble Bubble, being swallowed by a sea serpent. Naturally, nobody else saw this, so they don't believe him, because that would be silly. I mean, it's not like the G.I. Joe team has ever experienced anything weird. Like, I don't know, people with psychic powers or, you know, ghosts. No, I'm never letting the ghost thing go. Anyway, the next morning, the Joes come across the fresh wreck of a pleasure boat, with a family clinging on for dear life. They rescue them, of course, and take them to the flag, much to the kids' delight. The flag? G.I. Joe's aircraft carrier? Yep. Wow. Duke wants to talk to the kids to figure out what the hell happened to them. You and your folks had some experience last night, Jimmy. Take that, little Jimmy! He explains they got attacked by some kind of monster, and it ate the boat, and their little dog, too. It seems five other ships have been attacked in a similar manner just this week. While this is going on, Tomex and Zaymat are explaining the plot a little, as they are meeting with shipping company presidents, explaining that unless they pony up a lot of cash every month, all of their ships will be destroyed. At the same time, Lady J and Quick Kick are meeting up with Shipwreck, who has obtained some information, and he is being his usual professional self. I should have known you two would show up at nap time. Have a cold one. I love shipwreck. Anyway, a local fisherman has spotted something suspicious near the island, so they go investigate. In a small boat. You know, instead of the fighter jet they brought with them? Smart. They find a yacht, which we'll soon find out is owned by Cobra. But Cobra Commander appears to have cleverly hidden that fact by not plastering it full of Cobra symbols for once. No, instead, it's got a pirate flag. Subtle. Hey, Commander, that whole inconspicuous thing? You're doing it wrong! So the Joes get aboard and start fighting. Unfortunately, in the kerfuffle that follows, the remote control that controls the giant sea serpent gets destroyed, while at the same time setting the thing to kill all humans. And for convenience sake, I guess, the monster goes straight for their boat. So it eats Lady J, Quick Kick and Cobra Commander. Lady J manages to get to a safe place within the beast, where she meets our mad scientist of the episode. Please hurry, we haven't much time. No, I've got a buddy on that boat. Dear lady, you mustn't worry. He'll be all right. <laughs> In fact, all of them will be just fine. Yeah, this guy is what some people would call eccentric, but what most people, including me, prefer to call completely freaking Looney Tunes. Moving on. Quick Kick and the Commander appear to have been captured by the transporter from the USS Enterprise, I think, along with Steve and Bill. Hey, us masked goons never get names, so I figure I'd give him some. Don't get too attached to Steve, though, as he's soon taken from this cartoon and placed in a Japanese one from the looks of it. Lady J and Professor get to a room where they're safe from the tentacle monsters, and they even find little Jimmy's dog while they're at it. The pantsless nutjob explains that Cobra Commander forced him to turn the sea serpent into a weapon for Cobra. Just then, the monster has found another target and goes in for the kill. Luckily, the Joe team is around and they are coming to the rescue! They... they are about as effective as the Japanese military is against Godzilla. 
And if you're wondering what the rest of Cobra is doing during all this, they're just watching the events unfold on TV. As you may expect, they really don't give a crap about their commander, and are happy to sit back and let the Joes fight the Serpent, hopefully weakening them to the point where they'll be easy targets for Cobra. Hey, they're being smart for once. Funny, isn't it? How Cobra seems to get smarter the moment their beloved leader is out of the picture. Quick Kick and said beloved leader are being put to work by the tentacles. No sign of Bill, though. Our shirtless wonder gets contacted by Lady J, saying they're trying to sabotage the serpent from within. This fails, however, and the news is grim. Oh, the filament destroyed the override circuit! Now she'll never stop eating! The more she eats, the more she'll grow! Huh. There's a Yo Mama joke in there somewhere, but I think I'll let you guys think of one yourselves. Moving on, the monster is heading for New York, because that's what every freaking monster always does, it seems. So the Joes set up their defenses there. Sure enough, Serpent Terra shows up, and the Joes engage. Once again, to no effect. So yeah, we've got Gajira, Gajira, destruction, blah blah blah, until Dr. Dumbass finally manages a little sabotage. I'm going to create an energy bleed. There will be a terrible internal disruption. Hang on to your dog tags, Bucky. Energy bleed. Meaning, it's getting less energy. Meaning, it needs more energy. Meaning, it's gonna get more hungry. Whose side are you on? Anyway, going from one dumbass to the next, it's Bazooka, of all people, who gets an idea. He's gonna... he's gonna try to get the serpent to eat its own tail. You know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! And this works! Bazooka saves the freaking day! Yes! Redemption for Bazooka! Cobra, determined to crap in my cornflakes, sends in their troops to do... something. I have no idea what. Rescue the commander? Kidnap the scientist again? Get the treasure? Your guess is as good as mine. Oh. I guess they're gonna try to steal the entire damn serpent. Yeah, good luck with that. Meanwhile, inside the metal munching machine, everybody important makes their way to the control room. Even Bill! Cobra Commander, being his usual dumb self, gets the tentacle monster's attention again. And judging from Bill's expression, he has seen Japanese cartoons. Just then, Quick Kick comes to save the day. Wait, no, not the day, just the J. He rescues Lady J as Cobra Commander gets overwhelmed by hentai. And he's ejected from the monster? Huh, that's underwhelming. Hey, wait a minute. If all that happens when you get taken by the tentacles is that you get thrown out, then why didn't the professor tell them that? He built a damn thing, he ought to know. So why didn't he just tell everybody to piss off the tentacles so they'd all be set free? Then just, I don't know, throw a tech nuke down the thing's throat and send Nessie back to Scotland. Seriously, whose side is this guy on? So the Joes haul the metal carcass up and the prisoners are finally set free while little Jimmy is reunited with his dog. And the episode ends with Bazooka, the Joes favorite fisherman, posing for a picture with his biggest catch ever. So that was Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent. My final thoughts? Okay, the title is accurate enough, I suppose, but I had expected Bazooka to be in it more, considering his name is in the title. Yet, this is not an episode that showcases Bazooka. He only appears at the beginning and the end. Granted, at the end he does get to shine a little, but... Not a lot. Unlike similarly named episodes like Flint's Vacation, say, which does focus on Flint. So, the episode didn't deliver on that point. 
It also didn't deliver on the threat Cobra made in the middle of the episode. They said they'd wait until the Joes had beaten the monster, and while the good guys were at their weakest, they'd attack. I was expecting a big battle, but all I got was a couple of divers and one submarine trying to steal the serpent. That was weak, Cobra. Very, very weak. Having said all that, overall, this was still a fun, enjoyable episode with a pretty solid threat from the monster itself. One thing about this monster still baffles me, though. Our scientist of the episode had been forced by Cobra to turn his invention into a weapon. So the guy's not evil. Nuttier than a Snickers factory, yes, but not evil. So, what was the thing originally meant to do? This thing is a giant sea serpent that eats anything it can find and uses the materials to grow larger. What possible non-evil purpose could something like this have? Recycling? Because there are slightly easier and less dangerous ways to recycle, you know. I mean, I'd be pretty apprehensive about going down to the docks with my plastic bottles and throw them into the gaping mouth of a monster that Lovecraft might have thought up if he wasn't a giant robot. Nope, I think I'll stick with the recycle bin. And that's about all I have to say about Bazooka Saw a Sea Serpent. But we're not done yet, folks, because this week we've got something to celebrate again! This week marks half the battle's one year anniversary! That's right, I've been doing this crap for an entire year! And you know, it's been a lot of fun, and I think we've accomplished quite a bit. From the very shaky beginnings, where I appeared as a freaking toy, and doing everything in voiceover in a boring monotone drone, to what you see today. While I didn't really have any goals when I set out doing this, a few things have happened that I'm quite proud of. First and foremost, I managed to get myself an audience. I didn't really expect that, and it's quite humbling. I also managed to get a cameo from a longtime veteran, something I was very worried even asking for. Speaking of cameos, there are now people that are asking me to appear in their videos. That's just awesome. I'm also very pleased several episodes of Half the Battle have won awards. I've managed to get a few outstanding content awards from Manic Expression, and one of my videos was selected to be shown at Con Bravo as part of the Invit Showcase. It's been a great year for Half the Battle, and here's hoping the second year will be just as great, if not better. I should also take this opportunity to thank a whole bunch of people who've helped me over the year. Firstly, there's Brian Hines, the last Angry Geek, who was there with advice for me and even agreed to be in a cameo. That was awesome. Then there's Link Kara and his Facebook manager. Both were there with retweets and the occasional plug. Not just for me, but for a whole bunch of people. So they should be getting a lot of thanks from plenty of folk out there. Then there's the crew and Manic Expression in general, and Big Black Hat Man in particular. They've always been very supportive, and it's very much appreciated. Then there's the ghost. Well, the guy who plays him on occasion anyway. He still prefers anonymity, but you're appreciated, buddy. And finally, and most importantly, thank you guys, the audience. It's been a great ride, and it's a lot of fun having you guys around. You're also always there with advice and with retweets, and it's very, very much appreciated. So, here's to the last 12 months of half the battle, and to 12 great months more to come. <laughs> I have defeated you, face mask. I have defeated you.
bubblegum, bazooka zooka bubblegum, bazooka zooka bubblegum, bubblegum, bazooka zooka bubblegum. Yeah, I've had this song stuck in my head for an entire freaking week now. Welcome to my pain. Hope you get the same. <laughs>